Good evening and welcome to Conversations. You talk about you talk about having having issues at the start. Well, this is one of them days, but we're going to get through we're going to get through it because today is a great day. We're going to interview a social media partner, okay? We're going to interview someone who's changing the game, so to speak. And we're just going to have a great conversation. I'm talking about, I'll be speaking with the creator of Inside Stepping, Mr. Brian Forbes. So I want you to stay with me and enjoy this program. Get your popcorn, get your peanuts, get your drinks, get whatever you need. Get all that together because it's now time to have a conversation. Make sure you like, share, and let everybody know what's going on. And hey, let's, uh, let me just do this thing and let me see if I can start this show. All right, I'm trying to get this stuff right up in here. And I'm working, I don't know. Man, I'm, I, I got a I got a handicap today. <laughs> oh, I see, I see everything. I got a handicap today. I don't know why my, I don't know why my apparatus is not. I can't see the way where it should be. But we're going to. Oh, here you go. We're going to work this thing out. So you stay tuned. Okay, but hey, let's let's see. All right, come on. You know what? I might not even be able to do that. Let me bring let me bring Brian up here. Brian, come on. Let me get you up here right now. What's and, going on, and tell I get this. You know, for some odd reason, you know, I am not good with um without working uh with a mouse, and my mouse is just not act, it's just not doing right for me today. Hey man, this is what we call technical difficulties. And when you're dealing with this, uh Thing that we all enjoy so much there are issues they come up it is, it is part of the it's part of the business it's the nature of the beast baby so uh do what you got to do we right here we ain't going nowhere we got time tonight baby we got time oh, oh that's good now that's good i'm glad to hear that so <laughs> it worked out look if anybody understand it's me trust me i have i've had technical difficulties in the studio in the field you name it it happens all right, all right, I got it. I don't know, I don't know why this thing, uh, but it's it's I don't know, but it's just time. I know it's time for me to get. It's time for me to upgrade. So I'm getting ready to do that. You know, hopefully, hopefully Santa. Well, I won't even say Santa Claus is coming, but hopefully <laughs> I'll be able to. <laughs> hey, I'm looking for Santa Claus. I got one. I'm looking for. Trust me. Yeah. All right, I I hear you. So hang in there and don't tell me. Look, okay, good. Because I'm like, I got to get this stuff right. All right, hang in there. All right, good. Now we're back, and we're going to try to do this thing right. I am so glad we had a glitch right at the beginning. But we're here now, and it is time for conversation. So what you need to do is to make sure you like, share, and subscribe, and get this to all the people that you know. Let them know that Conversations is coming up next. The views and opinions expressed on conversations are those of the guest and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of Reggie Miles and Reggie Miles Entertainment. Any content provided by our guest are of their own opinion and are not intended to malign any religion, ethnic group, club, organization, company, individual, or anyone or anything.
Okay, we're back. We got that done. My guest today, Mr. Brian Forbes, creator, innovator of Inside Stepping. But before we get into all of that, you know, Brian, you know you're going to get the main question that everybody that gets when they come, well, not everybody, but the majority of folk they get when they come to conversations. Mm -hmm. And that question is very simple. What were you doing before the world's largest stepping contest? Hmm. That's a loaded one. Uh, well, I'll put it this way. When, before I think there was the world's largest, I don't know that we took this dance quite as, no, we did take it seriously. Um, I think because it didn't have the, mainstream appeal that it does now we more or less took it for granted i think we um it was just something that we did it was just a part of the fabric it was part of the network of life that we all lived and there really was no you know we going to step and we going to do this or we going to do that it was just kind of a thing certain songs came on we did it and that was that it was really no um no thing about you know how we were going to do that you go, you want to come on camera? Yeah. See, there you go. <laughs> you over there. Oh, even even I'm being interviewed and I still got to deal with the producer lady over here whispering in my ear. Um, the thing is, and she says hello, Reggie, by the way. Um, the thing is this when we were when my first my first steps, and I recently came up, there was a there was a debate on whether how we define our time in this dance because someone had a complaint about an individual mentioning when they first started this dance. Because people like myself and yourself, Reggie, we are what, what I refer to or what should be referred to as legacy steppers. We inherited this dance because it was handed down to us through family and friends and the camaraderie that we shared as a, as, a, as a culture in the city of Chicago. And in doing that, my first steps, uh, I believe, were in about 1975, 76, something like that. I think it was like 75. Um, I was a a uh, crash test dummy for some of my cousins who all went to Hirsch, by the way, over there on 77th and uh, over there on the other side of Cottage Grove. And they would come home uh, from school. And I was still in grammar school, of course, being 10 years old. And they would, you know, everybody would be practicing bopping. And of course, they would use me because, you know, there was only three of them. So they needed a fourth. So I was the fourth. And, you know, in time, um, it came natural. And there are so many things that have gone on between then and before the world's largest and one that stands out in my mind. Um, and I'm not sure what, what year was it that the, that the world's largest began? It was 90. What? Uh, 89 or 90. I believe it was 90 though. And the funny thing is this, my wife and I, we still actually lived in Chicago at that time. As a matter of fact, we hadn't even, we, we met in 91 in, I think eight between 89 and 90, something like that. I, I believe I had moved. I was living in Georgia. But when I moved back to the city, I met my wife. And one of the things, and, 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 and at that time, um, I wasn't, what was? We met in 90. Right. We met in, 90, we right. we met in Chick Ricks on, on your night, Reggie. Matter of fact, uh, <laughs> you were playing that night because you were there uh, in Chick Ricks on a Wednesday. Uh, we met in 90. Uh, that was in what, June? June 6th, she got the date down and everything. We met June 6th of 90 in Chick Ricks. And at that time, um, I was into some other things. And, you know, we weren't stepping like that, at least, you know. But her and I got together, and we automatically started doing what we both came up doing, which was stepping. And what I'll never forget, and this is one of the more memorable times for her and I in the city, and I guess this was during World's Largest, but I had moved in and out of Chicago a lot between um, in the in the mid '80s, early '80s, all the way to the early '90s. And I remember one night there used to be a club, Reggie. Maybe you could help me because her and I could not remember the name of it. There was a club on a hundred and I believe a hundred and either thirty something or forty something in Torrance that they used to step in. And the year what was that? Ninety one, baby, ninety one. The Christmas of 90, 
one or I think it was Christmas in 91. Her and I, they had a stepping contest in there that night. And Poppy and I got in it and we won. And at that time, you know, being newlyweds and both of us, you know, having our <laughs> life coming together, we didn't have any money and we had a newborn and we won that contest. And the thing that made it so memorable for us was because that was the money we used to actually give our baby a Christmas. Oh, and wow. So stepping <laughs> helped us with our first child at Christmas time. And it was literally, I think that, I think that contest, it was in December. As a matter of fact, it was cause it was real close to Christmas. Mm -hmm. But we, at that, you know, that was one of them times, man, we didn't have nothing else. We had love, Jack. We was good with that. We had each other and that, that was all that mattered. And that stepping, you know, was just one more thing that solidified our relationship. So, um, a lot happened before the world's largest in the regard, in the world of stepping. But, uh, you know, we all got a bunch of stories, but you know, um, it's always going to be a part of my life because that's, you know, that's what I came from. So what are you going to do? So, so you said uh, you from the South side, right? Absolutely. And you All were right. 79th street, baby. Lake show to Cicero. Yeah. And so you were, you was part of that Hirsch family. Well, I actually went to CVS and okay. so did my wife. Uh, we, we were both in the same school and did not know each other. We knew of each other, but we didn't know each other. Okay. Um, okay. All okay. my cousins went to Hirsch because I ended up, uh, my mother moved us out to the Wild Hunts, and we lived out there around 103rd Normal. I mean, 103rd uh, Wentworth up and through that area, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, I was fortunate enough that I had a teacher at my grammar school, which was Martha Ruggles, right down 79th Street, 79th and 78th and Prairie, as a matter of fact, who saw my potential educationally. And she was able, because back in those days, you couldn't just get into CVS. You had to know somebody, or you had to, you had to be able, you had to do something. And I had a teacher mm -hmm. who was who paid attention to me academically and she got me into CVS. So I commuted every day uh, from the hundreds to CVS to be able to go there. Mm. Was it a safe ride? Safety is relative. Um, you know, being a person that's from the city and then back in those days, man, you know, the worst that would happen is, you you know, you catch a pumpkin head, you get beat up. Nowadays, man, these people out here killing each other like like wholesale, like it's going out of style. We we just didn't do that. It wasn't. I mean, you know, you if somebody got killed, it was it had nothing to do with just some regular walking down the street stuff. You know, you you get beat up. You know, I've seen people get robbed. Hell, I got robbed a time or two. Um, never got beat up, fortunately. You know what I mean? But I knew how to navigate, and I had enough um, you know, juice in the street where you know people didn't just roll up on me like that. So, you know. It, it was what we, I guess we could consider a rough time, but when you look, when you take it from that time to now, it's a different world. It's a whole different world. Wow. Forbes, you like making me, you like making me famous. I mean, you, <laughs> it's a bunch of, it's a bunch of comments already on here. Oh, it yeah, must, be, it must be some of my, my favorite people on the show tonight. Oh, okay. All right. Lynn, John, and, uh, then, that's, uh, Howard Hodges. that's my man out there in Cali. Uh, we got, we got, a um, uh, uh, uh let me see. Yeah, and Lee and John, yeah, absolutely. My man Dallas Brown right down here in San Antonio with us. Um, we got Mary Mary Alice. Um, she'll get me if I say her name wrong because she gets me all the time. Mary Alicia Robinson. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah. wow, that's that's all that's all right. So I don't mind. I don't mind get boy. I'm I'm getting famous. So you know, hey, hey man, you you know you got you hold your own pretty good, Reggie. You don't need me. <laughs> And I'm just like, I say, whoa, what is, what's going on here? But this is, this is just what we do, um, being. Dennis Hodges I, say, wow, hunters. I knew it was something about you, Mel, 114th. <laughs> Not the point. See, he, 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 he can, he can identify with what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we getting a chance to, uh, do turnabout being fair play. Absolutely. Because I've been, you know, I've been on inside stepping. I've been in the studio and you, you've talked to me uh, and asked me about, about this dance that we both love, you know, many, many times. And I said, well, it's time, it's time to talk about Brian Forbes because Forbes is like, he's like making an impact. That's hard to you do. Are, <laughs> you are, you are first in at first of all, as a brother, as a black man, and you are taking these events 
And you're bringing these events home to, into the homes of thousands of people, not only in the local areas, but a, in, a, across the entire globe, around the globe. Whoever wants to see Steppen uh, when they want to see an event, you are there. Okay. What was what was the motive for that? Where did that come from? What inspired you to take it to the level that you've taken it? Well, the the thing about me, Reggie, a lot a lot of people, I don't I don't I don't talk about myself much. Um, and like you say, it's a time you know for people to get to know Brian Forbes and you know talk about inside stepping. But my resume is long, and I don't discuss a lot of the things that I have in my, in my wake, uh, because I'm always about moving forward. It's about progress and, and progression. And 20 years ago, I started doing a uh, little podcast and different things. I, uh, wish that I had stuck with it when I started it, because by now I would be on a even different level than I am. But what happened, you know, I've always had a passion for photography. One of my one of the things on my resume is I am a professional photographer. Um, in fact, I did an, a, a large amount of celebrity photography meant for many years uh, when I lived in Atlanta. And I was, a, I'm a biker as well, you know, motorcycles. I've built by, I build bikes that I've done that for a long time. And in my period, my motorcycle period, when I was really heavy, heavy, heavy into it, uh, we would go to the different bike events and I always had a camera. I always had a video camera and a steel camera in my possession. And the technology has evolved so much in the last 20 years that now things are so much easier to do. But what I would do is I would videotape the events. Um, you know, I've, I've got footage from um, motorcycle rides where we were rolling down the interstate 500 deep, um, you know, different things like that. And so this is something that I've always gravitated toward anyway. So because we got into you know, um, got more involved in the stepping world on a, on a national scale. It just gave me the subject matter to do what I do. So it just kind of made it easy for me. Like a lot of people, there are a lot of individuals who I think would love to get into what you and I both do, Reggie, which I encourage people to do it. But I also know that it is not something that you just wake up tomorrow and do. There are a lot of talent <laughs> in this. <laughs> in this thing and you know i think sometimes we make it look easy but there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes as you were stating when you opened the show today because you were having some technical difficulties and if anybody understands that as me i've been at major events and had stuff go wrong but you have to be able to adjust on the fly and that comes with experience and time and i've got 20 some years in this game not you know we talking about stepping but if you take the subject matter away i still been at this for a very long time what'd you say baby she says it's been 30 years. Yeah, so, you, you well, yeah, that's true. When she met me, I actually was doing photography then. That was 30 years ago, um, wow. 30, 32 years ago. I've even got video from Steppers parties all the way back from the 90s. I've got photographs. Um, you know, I was another one thing on my resume, Reggie. I used to make clothes. I was a, a popular fashion designer in Chicago for a long time. Wow. Lots of fashion shows. Um, and I was a part of a lot of the stuff that went on in that regard. And so I photographed all my own stuff that I made. So mm -hmm. that, that's just one more thing. <laughs> so now we've gotten to the question. I mean, well, we're inside the question, right? Well, who is Brian Forbes? And so that's what we're talking about right now. No. And, Brian, and Brian doesn't like to talk about himself in his resume. And so, but he's been around yeah. and we're doing some, we're doing some things different here on this uh, on this plane with this with this medium. Mm -hmm. Now, some of the things now compare what you do now, or kind of like talk about some of the things that you're doing now that is different from when a lot of the media practitioners started to get out there with stepping because we could let we're gonna have to talk about that because well, I, I wanna, i've seen a change in a in a movement go ahead oh we absolutely there absolutely is a, a a shift taking place and i gotta give shouts out to those who came before us the t pratts and you know other individuals who made stepping media 
a thing long before you and I, Reggie, have taken up this mantle. Um, there, in fact, for the audience who may not know this, there was an Inside Stepping magazine before there was Inside Stepping the show. And um, shout out and kudos to that staff and those people who are who had done some phenomenal work in bringing Stepper's News to the public, but in written form. Um, there are and, and oh, and, and I, how can I forget Marky B? You know, most people now, when I say the word, when I say the name Marky B, most of these people have no idea who that man is. And Marky B was was the um, step in archivist. I mean, this guy had video and pictures of everything and everybody. And may he rest in peace. He's been gone now a couple of years, a few years now. But Marky B, man, he put he he, he set the game on fire. Um, but where we are now is a different world because we live in a an information age we live in the technological age to the point where so many people are everything is a sound bite everything is um comes across a cell phone people don't even watch terrestrial television anymore or, or listen really to terrestrial radio everything is through the internet everything is online and if you know, we, you and I, Reggie, and people like Tony Adway and Lady Sings the News and, and Latika Billups, uh, the tea lady, and all of the other individuals, uh, Denise Steiger, the uh, 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 video queen, you know, all of us who are making inroads toward bringing this information as close to home for people as possible um, are doing an incredible service because uh, it, it's not just me. It's all of us. You know, and we collectively, because we have our own lanes, are able to provide um, a medium that has yet to be seen by anyone in this realm or this this genre of dance or music. And so because of that, we are actually being able to help change the game because we've it, it's gone unchecked for so long. Uh, the dance itself, I still feel, is in its infancy uh, on many levels. And I know that it has to be archived. It has to be documented correctly. A lot of misconceptions and misnomers have taken place over the years. A lot of misinformation has been provided. A lot of people have told a lot of lies. I'm going to just call it what it is. A lot of individuals have run through this game and run amok. And they've taken people's money. They've sold people bills of goods. They've sold them snake oil and everything else. And so as long as... You and I and Lamont Watch checking in. My man Lamont Watch, another media head. Um, as long as you and I and 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 the rest of us who have the information and have access to the information and can put our finger on the button if we don't know the information to find it, are able to set the records straight. We are able to make the difference in the community that has saved people and is saving people from making wrong moves from getting shut, getting, getting a uh, 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 bamboozled, run amok, hoodwinked by individuals who are unscrupulous, have low moral turpitude and have no other intention rather than to just take their money. So for me to do this is an opportunity to allow people to get this dance fairly, squarely and correctly without the nonsense. Mm. So I hope I didn't go too far off, off my, <laughs> off the question, but you know, we have a job here. We have a, we have a responsibility. The reason I keep doing this is because there's plenty of days when I just want to walk away. I'm not going to lie to you. There are days when I get aggravated, I get phone calls from people and they say things, um, that sometimes I, you know, I listen to them, but you know, there are so many personalities and so many different, uh, uh, stories in the steppers world. And you and I both know we get phone calls and we hear things that will never be aired. We hear things that, uh, are valid points that we will discuss, but we'll never say where they came from and that sort of thing. So when, you know, you, you have days where you get frustrated and you're like, you know what, I'm sick of this. And some of these people get on my nerves and I'm not going to lie. It's plenty of people. <laughs> some of these people do get on my nerves, but, but I cannot allow myself to walk away from those who need the services. Cause this is a service. We're serving the community. I can't walk away from my duty to serve this community because of a couple of individuals all I can do, because I don't have to talk about anybody, but what I can do is point out those who uh, 
make the difference and the things that are going to make the difference and the things that are going to make somebody else's dance better. When you have people walk up to you and say to you, thank you, man. I appreciate your show. Keep, please keep doing what you're doing. I was ready to stop dancing, but I saw your show and you helped me understand some things. And now I can move forward in my dance because of what you do. I can't walk away from that, bro. I got a responsibility now and, and, and it's inadvertent because this was not something that I intended it's just a natural progression how I ended up right here. Man, I'm going to tell you, uh, when you, you made that comment about people coming up to you, and that's like, that has been like blowing my mind. Yes, sir. Uh, that has been blowing my mind just because just on yesterday, uh, I went out to the 38th anniversary of Good Times Productions. Mm. 38 years and just and I, I had to write about this because it blew my mind. Just me. I I can't even do the things that I used to do going out to a party. Reggie, anymore. Reggie, I saw I saw your I saw your uh your commentary. But what I want you to do, because you just said the 38 years of good times, explain exactly what you mean, because there are people out here who do not clearly understand what that means. Explain what the what what Good Times Production is. Good Times Production is a social club out of Chicago, okay, that have been giving a set on the fourth Sunday of every month for 38 years. Straight. Straight. Probably the only interruption was during the pandemic. Oh, yep. So I, that's I want people understand how that that longevity, what that means, the dedication required for somebody to lock themselves into that for 30 plus years. That's deep, man. 38, excuse me, 38 years. Uh, and I calculated over like I, I and I just did this as a conservative es estimate over 420 sets. Wow. That's crazy, man. Now, who is it today that's going to be able to match that? That's dedication and love. So that that's 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 a tough one. And I don't I don't even know that something like that can be uh and it be if it can be matched, right? Right. Yeah, that's I mean, we because we because guess what? By the time somebody matches that, Reggie, you and I'll probably be long gone. Yeah, that's what yeah. I that's yeah. what I'm thinking. We're and uh, that's what I'm thinking. And then I'm like, I'm saying to myself, uh, uh oh, where Reggie go? We lost him. Uh, well, since he's not, l let me just say this: uh, for someone to be able to uh, provide an event with that level of dedication for that amount of time is is phenomenal, and it's a very I don't want to say it's a difficult thing to do because most of the people who serve this community that way are people who love this community that way. And I want y'all to understand something. There are two different types of individuals within this community. There are those who love this community and there are those who are looking to siphon off what they can from this community. Okay. He, he, now I'm glad I thanks Brian for filling in. That's a great thing. No now here Lamont Lamont Watts is saying, and then I gotta tell this story about Lamont, right? <laughs> okay. Lamont, Lamont and I used to work together, okay? okay. As a matter as a matter of fact, when Lamont got in the radio, I mean I was a ma I was a manager of the station where he was working at, okay? Mm -hmm. And so Lamont saw me. Uh, Lamont had saw me in 2018 at Stepaganza mm -hmm. when I was being awarded. And Lamont says to me, he says to me, I didn't know you had this history. <laughs> he said, I didn't know you had this history. Mm -hmm. And so he's saying, and so he put his comment, he said, don't forget about Black Mary, mm -hmm. Black Mary, and Rose Wellington. Absolutely. Okay, so let me let me put that let me put that in in a in the in the context that it should be in its right, historical right. Yeah, I'm gonna say very good. Good idea. Go okay. ahead. All right. Black Mary 
Black Mary, you know, is she had Black Mary's dream. Her, mm -hmm. along with Yvonne Paramore, Kitty Neely, Sandra Swain, and Lula, they formed the original old timers. Mm -hmm. Their mission was to save dusty music. That's Black mm -hmm. Mary's dream. Mm -hmm. That's Black Mary's dream to save dusty music and the style of sets that they that they were used to going to, you know, in their younger years. All right. So we'll just put that on the side. Now, Rose. Uh, put it on the side with an asterisk because we got people that's trying as hard as they can to disrespect that dream. But go ahead. <laughs> well, we ain't going to worry about that because we're going to keep going. But then, but then you got, then you got Cheryl Jackson mm -hmm. who has the longest sustained <clears throat> social club, mm. 38 years. Mm -hmm. And then Rose is after that. So we're not forgetting anybody. Right. What we're doing is talking about good times production. There go. Now that okay. there's context. Very good. Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> that's right. All right. So well, let's get, cause see, uh, and that's like one of the things that has been happening out here with this history. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of name throwing and this, that, and other. And for one thing about me is that I've been there to all, you know, through all each one of those ladies I've attended mm -hmm. and said each one of them, each one of them spun for two of them. But I've been dancing at all of them. There you go. And, and you know, to me, you know, the, these are the things. You know, Reggie, I've been in situations across the country, uh, unfortunately, where I've literally heard people say things like, you know, when somebody begins to talk about these historic milestones and important uh, periods and points and times and people throughout our culture, and they'll say stuff like, ah, I just want to dance. Mm. They don't understand why it's important to know these things. And it sometimes becomes difficult to give an explanation because there's so much more that has to go with that conversation. And it's like they just really sometimes do not grasp it. And I uh, love when someone who's never been to the Mecca comes home and they have an opportunity to touch hands with people with whom they would never touch hands only because they're within the city limits because those people don't move around the globe the way some of us do. And then they leave that place with a newfound spirit, a new understanding, some clarity for this dance. I love it when I hear them say, now I get it. That is those those are some of the most important words <laughs> that I hear and I love hearing because it just shows me that there, here's one more person who has finally wrapped their mind around what's happening, you know, and they, and they, they're not. And, it, and people have to have a point of reference when you don't have a point of reference. There's a lot of things you're not going to understand. And so it's, it's just that important for things, these, these sorts of facts and uh, uh, fun facts and, 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 and information come out one of the, you know this was like this was like really um uh and maybe you can help me get through this mm -hmm. and get wrap my head around this for some odd reason uh everybody just tried to lump stepping into one pot well you and can you, you go ahead go ahead if go, you go, know go. where i'm going with this go I, ahead um, the, the reason that happens, Reggie, you have to understand this within the city of Chicago, which is a very segmented and segregated city, even within the black neighborhoods, because you have different, um, gang factions, you have different social cliques and things like that throughout the entire city. So needless to say, and particularly when stepping 
or should I say the phrase stepping was coined during that period. We're not talking about a bunch of people who had the means, resources, or wherewithal to travel throughout the city. You had a handful of people that did travel from set to set, from the west side to the south side. But we also know that we're not talking about well-traveled individuals. We're not talking to people. It's like kind of like when we hear people say, well, so-and-so lying. He wasn't there. <laughs> okay, yeah. bro. First of all, I spent my formative years into adulthood within that city. I can go home right now and meet people who travel within the same circles as me that I never laid eyes on. Or if I did, I don't remember. Them. One prime example of that is, for example, myself and Kevin Neville. Ambassador, the ambassador, man, me and that cat ran with some of the same people traveled in this within the same neighborhood. Did they didn't know each other. Things. But he and I, it took years for he and I to connect up. Right. Yeah. And yeah. realize the commonality in our existence. Yeah. yeah, so yeah. You hear people say stuff like, oh, so and so wasn't there. He wasn't there. First of all, to me, that's a moot point because you don't know that. There are people who make these statements as though they were the fly on the wall at every set in the city. Impossible. Impossible. <laughs> Impossible. Stop it. So, you know, and then, and then you got people who just, you know, they may have been there once. They may have went there twice. And I'm talking about all the different clubs. I'm not talking about just one or two. And then it's at the point now where people have heard certain names so much has now become regurgitated grass. Okay, they heard other people say, well, I was here. I did that. I actually heard somebody tell a story that I actually heard from somebody else over a year ago. Mm. Now, that tripped me out. I'm like, oh, bro, really? So whose story are we? Whose story is that? Like, like you telling a story that I, I, I promise you. <laughs> it's insane to me the length to which some people will go in order to make themselves relevant or gain the attention that they think they need in this community. It's amazing. Wow. wow. So wow. Yeah, you, 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 we're dealing with a very interesting dynamic in terms of the individuals within this community. Um, and, you know, everybody in this community has a story. And so when did, when did that... With everybody else's doesn't mean that it's not true. So when did the bent stories, so to speak, start? Uh, because I'm thinking... I'm thinking that part of the bending of, I think part of the bending of uh, the history and culture of the dance, it, it happened in the, in the two thousands. I'm going to have to agree um, because prior to that, well, let's look, let, let, first of all, let's look at it like this. In this community, we now have, because of its popularity, we have so many people who, and it's, and especially those who are not from where we're from. You and I both know that some of the conversations that we hear, some of the commentary and some of the behaviors that we witness back in those days would not have taken place. Not without somebody catching a bad one. Somebody would have got their head busted. You feel me? So we're in a period where people say things and do things and they just get away with it because mm -hmm. nobody's going to stop them. I mean, nobody's going to say anything and people are now, you know, here's the thing. If we behaved like we did back in the day, the stepping game would get a terrible black eye. Mm. We would hurt this entire community. If violence were to break out, some people do not realize just how close they've come to being in violent situations <laughs> in this community. The only thing that has stopped a few people from catching the pumpkin head is age mm. and some levels of maturity. Mm. Some of us still are not that mature though. Let's keep it 100. I know some 60, 70 year old cats running around here that will split your wig, you dig, still to this day. Now, the thing is, because people's behaviors are the way that they are, they can tell these stories. They can say whatever they want. I have heard, I get every time somebody, for example, comes on your show, on my show, on Tony's show, 
even on Stretch's show, Tika's show, all these different shows, all these people that are doing interviews, they'll come on there and they'll make certain comments and my phone will blow up. He lying. He can't, he didn't do this. He wasn't there. He said this, he blah, blah. And I'm, you know, and this is what I encounter on a regular basis when somebody is saying something that somebody else doesn't agree with. Now, you can't get some of these individuals to come forward and say what's on their mind. A lot of them, to be honest with you, shouldn't come forward and say what's on their mind because you and I both know it's going to cause a doo-doo storm. <laughs> it's just it's just not a good idea. But at the same time, you have people to say things and sometimes they don't even realize how offensive they are with their words while they're telling a story that is inaccurate or untrue, mm. just blatant lie. I have, I know some people, you know, and I try to avoid the conversations because I really don't want to sit there and, you know, I don't have no heaven or hell to put nobody in. Mm. But I do know this. If I know you're a liar, I just prefer you leave me alone. I mean, I'm just going to be honest with you. And my wife tells me all the time, you know, about my show that I need to be politically correct. I need to try and, you know, not be biased and this sort of thing. But one thing people need to understand about me, I'm still Brian Forbes inside step and be damned. And if I lose respect for you because you're a liar, well, that's your fault. If a bridge get burnt, you brought the gas can and the matches. And my thing is when it comes to this dance, I don't understand why it's necessary to make up so many different lies and stories and tales why can't you just be who you are and tell your story and leave it at that why do people feel the necessity the necessity for hierarchy in to trump somebody else's story that's some per that's some deep personal uh uh ego stuff or you know and i you know i i just i just look at that and and it's because it's one thing for certain that I've learned that what to do. You know, I'm going to tell you if I was there or if I wasn't there or mm -hmm. if I heard that or whatever. Because, there's, you know, there's been a lot of things that have been have been said to me. And like for when I first came, when I first make, started making my road back to mm -hmm. wanting to capture the old histories and uh, I ran across Dan Land mm. and yeah. and and the late and the late Steve Breeze Brewer, mm -hmm. and you know I was on fire with a position right, and Brewer and and Breeze and Breeze and Dan both of them they asked me they said well, what about the new Bob? Hmm. Said what about the new Bob? Mm -hmm. And then. And and I and I like had to I like had to come back. <laughs> I had to come back. And then I went to research that journey mm -hmm. myself. And that's when I let that out at, at Step Aganza in 2018, 2019, 2019, the two tracks. Mm -hmm. That's when I, I could be called. When I start, when I start talk, especially when I talk to to the late Breeze, and he started mentioning names, and then I start running them names across some of my peers and stuff. Right. Then these stories start really getting clear, because mm -hmm. there's some names out here on the set from the new boppers that I mean that if some of these cats was out today, it would put a lot of these cats that's dancing to Absolutely. I, to I shame. Tell, I tell people that all the time. I say, you know, you think you've seen the coldest steppers, but trust and believe there's some cats in Chicago right now that if they ever decide to lace their shoes up, you can bet your ass it's going to be trouble. They come in and they're going to kill the game. And, you know, you could talk about them all day, but, you know, most of these guys, like I, I know a guy right now. They used to call him Chino back in the day. Man, let me tell you something. He used to give Ty Skippy hell. You feel me? But this guy is just not in the game no more. He's just, every time I see him when I come home, 
you know, I, I just, I'd be like, man, you ought to come on, go to the set with me. Nah, man, I'm cool. I'm cool. You know, he ain't interested, you know, but one of the coldest to ever do it. But man, you know, you know, and the stories that I would hear about mm -hmm. the guys now, like the story of the guys, you know, um, in your era mm -hmm. that wore the trench coats at the sets uh -huh. the mechanics, and then, <laughs> and then, then the stories about the guys that were professional pickpockets on the Ooh, set. Man, what? And stick up guys. You know, I'm like, whoa. <laughs> you know, you know one, of, one of the things that I love, I think I love about back in the day, man, is that criminals back in those days, which to some degree most of us were, uh, everybody had their lane. Like, if they was a stick up kid, that's what they did. If they was a, you know, if they was a hustler, a gambler, that's what they did. If they was a pickpocket, that's what they did. Everybody had they they had their niche and they stayed in their lane. And most times a cat that was a pickpocket or a thief wasn't really violent, and vice versa. You know, that kind of thing. Now they they all these criminals are multifaceted, man. You know, you had some colorful characters back in the day, man. It was some, it was some tough cats out there. But the thing about it was, even though you know, like I said, somebody might catch a bad one. You know, you might, you know, get into a fight, whatever. You know, right. Uh, Poppy said car thieves. Exactly. You know, somebody might get into it with somebody. You know what I'm saying? It was a fight. Fight over. Everybody go home, lick their wounds. You come back tomorrow and you do it again. Nowadays, I don't know, man. These cats, is, these, these young cats is on another level. My wife has to remind me when we go home, you know, she'd be like, look, your juice on the street done dried up. You know? <laughs> She, she like, look, these people, these people out here, not these is your peers, grandkids and great grandkids. Wow. You know, they don't know you like that. And I'm like, yeah, you know what? You're right. You and they right. don't have and yeah. they don't have no uh, they don't have no history of who was what if they're, they're creating they and they making. About, they don't know about none of that. Now yeah. they'll, they'll find out if I had to put them in a box. But you understand me? But, you know, it, it's it's just a shame that we we in our society and and to be honest with you and i know this is my, probably a little bit off the subject this is one of the reasons why even with this whole new school thing you know we treading on real thin ice with that you know what's going to happen when we start playing hip hop at a step -a set and the crowd shifts like it tends to do in clubs that while one at one for a little while we doing a thing we step in then all of a sudden the crowd changes and all of a sudden now you got a bunch of cats want to come in there and mean mug each other. Yeah. All right. So let, let's hold that off. Let's hold that off. We're going to get into that, but let me ask you right. first. Uh, let me ask you first, uh, share the names of some great dancers that you knew from your era, from your time, share the name. I ain't going to lie to you, Reggie. I can't. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm ter I'm terrible with with all of that, man. I'm 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 terrible with names. I'm terrible. You know, it's guys. There was this cat, um, uh, and I cannot remember his name. Uh, went to CVS, huh? No, I was trying to help you with this. Oh, uh, no, you wouldn't. You wouldn't even know this guy. Um, he used to run with me and Kenny back in the day. We used to go to his crib all the time. I can't. I'm terrible with names, Reg. I swear I am. Uh, if it's if it ain't somebody that's been around me for years and years, I forget. Yeah, you. I got yeah. you. I I uh, got you. I, look, I can remember. Oh, oh yeah, that's true. Look, I was uh, me and Poppy just reminded me. I got I got video of that guy Chino I was talking about. I got video of him. I got video of Donnie Davis back in who was that? What was that like eighty? No, ninety. Ninety. I, no, it wasn't ninety three. <laughs> It'd be ninety two. Ah, right. anyway. I got video of Donnie. I'm going to dig that. I keep saying I'm going to dig that video out. I'm going to dig that video out. I got old video of Donnie Davis. Um, you know, just people that I was around on the set, man. And, and it's funny because in the early 80s, when I used to be up in Chick Ricks, Weasel, uh, uh, Casper, um, uh, Pete, Twins, all, man, we used to all be up in Ricks every week. <laughs> we, that I mean, and that's how I met all of them up in Rick's, you know, and we used to all, you know, party like a son of a gun up in there back in them days. 
And matter of fact, that was the first time I ever seen, but you know, people laugh and joke about Casper doing the world's largest with skates. But the first time I ever seen Casper put on some skates in a contest was in Chick Ricks <laughs> before the world's largest. You know, Casper, Casper has a, Casper is an entertainer, period. Absolutely. Absolutely. He's an entertainer, period. You yep. know, Casper was a con contortionist. I mean, he, I mean, he did all kinds of things. I seen Casper. Uh, had to be. I seen Casper in like had to be like in the from seventy three, probably earlier seventy three. Cause I used to spin for this guy named Sam Taylor, and Casper used to Casper always did the pantomime shows. He was always doing That's some other perform. things. Always performing. Yeah, he always did some other things before he started dancing, mm -hmm. and. Um, the world's largest was a, you know, was another platform. Plus he, you know, when Casper started dabbling in the radio, I, you know, I mentored him when he was at, when he was uh, coming up to WKKC where I was a student working. Well, you, you know, know, it's funny. Cause when, when I moved, since when I'm, I moved out of the city in like 92, I moved back out of the city because between 83 and the early nineties, I had lived in California. I lived in Atlanta, but, it was it it was funny to me when um you know years later when Casper made that song, I think we were living in either Tennessee at the time or Georgia. I can't even remember, but <laughs> when it came out, I started laughing. I was like, that has Casper made that. Oh, I was tripping, you know, because so much went on when we left the city, uh, that you know, we just it's so much we didn't know. And I've and I actually had somebody remind me of that because they were trying to make a point as to, to, to try and tell me how things evolved from the late nineties or the mid nineties into hey, the hey, you know, you know, for, I hate that word evolve. I hate, yeah. you know, I mean, dealing with this, with this stepping community that I'm beginning to hate that. Be, I, I'm beginning to hate that. Not to use it to be honest, but I'm, but I'm paraphrasing what that individual said to me. So, you know, the only thing, the only thing that, it, there was no evolution. It was just an addition of instructors. <laughs> that, was, that ain't even that ain't evolving. Well, That's, that was the addition of instructors. And, and see, to be honest with you, <clears throat> like I, I, one of the things that annoys me the most about that particular shift in the dance is that, and, and this is one of the reasons why I love the East of the Rhine so much, but. One of my favorite places was the other place. And I was just telling somebody the other day, some of the coldest walkers I ever seen in my life was in the other place. Some of them old heads, man, I used to just sit in the back of the room and watch them just, just get it in. But one of the reasons that I loved that period and particularly the East of the Rhine is because, and this was what I was accustomed to coming up in the stepping game. No two people looked alike. Everybody mm. had their own style. Everybody, mm. and 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 this is what made the difference between cold steppers and cats that was just out there trying to, you know, get mm. their hands on a woman. Which that's mm. what the dance was always about, anyway. It was always about the women. Mm. So it's like when I watch people now, and I hear I hear men make statements to women like, "Oh, you supposed to be over. You were supposed to be right here." First of all. Ain't nobody in this dance supposed to be nowhere but where they at. Let's just start right there. Uh, okay. Secondly, if a man hasn't put that woman where she's supposed to be because of his lead being where it's supposed to be, that ain't her fault. That's his fault. This mm. is not a choreographed dance. And people need to get that through their head. It never has been. It never will be. What it has changed into is that people make the mistake of thinking that because they've learned these eight steps that they have the dance. And I'm going to give you this analogy, and I've given it before, but I'm going to give it to your audience. The eight count is nothing more than a set of keys. When you get in your, when you get out of your car in your driveway, your front of your apartment, whatever you do, and you get ready to walk into your house, you pull your keys out of your pocket and you stick them in the door. And then you open your door. That key allows you to unlock that door. And you go behind that door, you close it. But the first thing you do once you do that is you put your keys down. And then you enjoy 
what's on the other side of your door. The eight count is nothing more than a set of keys that allows you to enter the room where stepping is. So in other words, you're supposed to take that eight basic steps, the basics, build on that with your dance and become the stylish dancer that sets you apart from everybody else that allows you to be on stage, if that's what you choose to do, and make a show out of your dance. Why do you think the, the docs, the ticks, the Sherry Gordons and the people who everybody loves so much because they're not doing what you're doing? Hey, I got to, we got to we got to put on the brakes because Lynn, Lynn John said new school stepping equal not really about the woman. It tends to showcase the man, and if the woman makes a mistake, the woman is scolded. Oh and man, that's <laughs> and that's I'm a, I'm a, that's I'm, a, I'm my period. My, what? And I've seen that happen. She's out. Listen, and it's wrong. But see, these are people who sit up, they have to find a reason why what they're doing is okay. Let's let's be, let's just keep it 100 right here. There are men who are actually mediocre dancers who get way more credit than they deserve in the dance because, I'm going to tell you what annoys me. When I see a man standing in the middle of the floor, literally standing in place, he ain't moved his feet yet. Everything is a turn. That ain't stepping. I don't care what nobody say. You want to debate me on it, let's do it. That ain't stepping. Oh, my. Stepping is from the waist down. Mm. Period. Full stop. Mm. Feet. Footwork. If you don't have any footwork, you can do all the turns. And turns are fillers for what you don't know how to do. When I was coming up in this dance, being a young cat who, of course, loved older women, and I would go to the spots where the older women were, where the other track that you talk about, Reggie, was dancing, then women would tell you straight out, don't turn me. Now, I'd love to see some of these guys that call themselves dancing now stand in front of one of them women, and she tell you, don't turn me. I want to see what, what you're going to do. What, where your footwork at? What you got? Man, I look. I'm, I, I'm like, my mind, my mind is still, my mind is still blowed over the fact that my mind is still blowed over the fact that the new school ain't thinking about the women. Now, I'm, my mind, I'm, my mind is blowed. Up. It's blowed. Every circuit in my, every circuit in my brain is, it's just not uh, because I. Yeah. I don't understand that. Let me let me explain it to you. I'm going to give you the explanation for that too. Here's what you got to remember. And I haven't said this in a while publicly, but I'm going to say it now. You now have, and I don't, and I'm not knocking the fellas because we don't have enough of them. But let's keep it 100. <clears throat> a lot of these guys that are in this dance now, especially these new school cats, half of them may never even slow dance with a woman, let alone understand or have the natural swag to move a woman verbally. If a man doesn't have what it takes to seduce a woman, forget the dance. It is very difficult for him to translate what is required to have the finesse in the dance to give a woman or make her feel the way she needs to feel. Period, point blank. Reggie, you yourself have talked about how these women, you like to see a woman smile when you dance with her. You know why, Reggie? Because you got finesse, because you got swag, because you got that je ne sais quoi. You got what is required to make a woman feel some kind of way in your dance. But if you're a guy who learned how to count to eight and knew how to do a couple of turns and you wrap a woman up in, her arm, in your arms and you just do a couple of spins and she's like, ooh, that works. Now you know Forbes. Now you know Forbes. I'm gonna tell you. Uh, I'm not impressed, you know, as a dancer myself. Mm -hmm. I'm not. There are very few guys on the set today that I'm impressed with. 
Very few. I don't care. Right. I don't care if you were won the contest. I don't care if you you doing. I don't care if you did thirty two count. Whatever you created, <laughs> you know. I I ain't caring about. I ain't caring about none of that mm -hmm. because you know. Any listen, the only person that ever taught me to dance was my mother. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then it got refined by my brothers, but I got that rhythm. Mm -hmm. I'm from 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 family. I'm from the watch and learn generation. That's right. You know, I'm a thief in the night. Hmm. I'm a thief in the night. We I'm, all had to be thieves in our day, Reggie. Because yeah, you know, I'm 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 looking to see what, what I can take from somebody. Right. That's right. What no instructors when we was coming up doing this. You you took the time to watch. That's why we had the circles. That's why we had the groups. You stood back and you watched a cat get down. And you was like, oh, that was cold. You better be paying attention because he probably wasn't going to do it twice. But look, Forbes, mm -hmm. now listen. Just because you got the eight count or whatever you're doing with that. And if you was a chump before you got the eight count, even after you got the eight count, to me, you still a chump. Stop. Let me let me finish my thought, Reggie. No, let me, let me, because you because you're going down the exact path I was on. Mm -hmm. So now we talking about guys who don't have that swag, that natural thing that required certain individuals to be cold steppers back then. Mm -hmm. You either had it or you didn't. You had guys what we used to call them marks. Mm -hmm. had, yeah, that's it. That's it. it wasn't about that game. They wasn't about that life. Then you had them cats that was all about that life. Now, fast forward to today. You got men who ain't never had this level of access to women in their life. They figured out real quick that if they learn this dance, all of a sudden, all the new, new fish that float by in the game, you've been doing this a couple of years now, you can fake it real good. I know a guy right now. Oh, my God. These cats, they use this as a watering hole mm. to achieve things that they would otherwise not be able to achieve. You know what? The other day I got to thinking about something, Reggie, and I had to ask, and I asked, asked my wife, I said, what do I really wonder sometimes? And, you know, I've been married for a very long time now. And I don't know what it's like on the dating scene, but I often wonder to myself because I know how shallow some of these people are. And I wonder to myself, what kind of conversation do they have off the dance floor? Mm. Like, what do you say? Because <laughs> you have no, you have no, no finesse whatsoever. Oh, baby, you know, when we was dancing, you missed that seven. You know what I'm saying? Is that your conversation? Like, yeah, I, yeah. I, I be thinking about what can you possibly be talking to her about? Yeah, uh, yeah. you know, listen, next time, baby, on this three, I'm gonna when I slide back with it, I want you to <laughs> and catch up with me when I get to the six. Uh -huh. oh, so to 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 keep all of the conversation down. Come on, let's dance. Keep yeah, dancing. Yeah, yeah, oh, that, yeah. I keep seducing you or uh, try to seduce you with the dance so I don't have to talk to you because my conversation is nothing. Wow, 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 wow. This is what we're dealing with. And for those people, the dance is still about the women because they've never had access to women like this in their life. They learned how to count to eight and these women think that that is the dance. So, of course, this also adds to the misnomer that the basic of this dance is the dance. And so it becomes popular. The guys think, well, I could do this. And the girls think, oh, he does that well. Oh, I like him. Man, these com these comments is coming across here real fast. Oh, yeah. uh, and I can't date because they, they going, I'm going to have to look at it on Facebook <laughs> or something like that because these folk is really getting And then I can't get to it with my mouth like I want to. So, well, we're still going. We're going to still work this stuff out. But these comments is like Lynn John is, she she put in a couple of comments. Oh, and I remember that she talked about, uh, the stomp. Let me tell you, let me tell you about stomping. Stomping uh, is really from, stomping is from my time. Uh, 
I don't know if an instructor can put in his regiment stomping. I don't know. That's a, that's I, a natural act, Reggie. That's right. That's, Judge, I'm trying to figure it, out. I don't, what, I don't know that that should be taught. I, I yeah, think that's, that's see, cause that that cause that I don't. So Lynn, y'all, it won't be more guys. It won't be more guys doing the stomp cause. You no, know Reggie, I'm, I'm gonna tell you, and I know I can relate. I can specifically relate to what you are talking about because for a long, I I stomped myself for years and i just and it's funny you mentioned it because one day you one day you mentioned it and i thought to myself damn i haven't done that in quite a while and i swear i used to put that foot down jack <laughs> that was that was a thing you know but and it's funny because i you know there's a lot of it's so much stuff that i've forgotten and i don't dance as much as i used to but it's like it's amazing to me when every now and then when that muscle memory kick in and i remember something and i go oh damn i used to do this and i haven't done it in so long and it's just like yeah and so, yeah, I don't know. This, 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 this dance is so it's so it's like two things. Like, uh, and I missed him this weekend, but Bumpy Face Slim was on set. And uh, anybody that does a side kick and a back kick, uh, when they stick their leg out, that came from Slim. Uh huh. You know, that came from Slim. Nobody does it as pretty as Slim. Okay, and to enhance that, Macaroni would kick out George. I'm talking about Big George. Mm -hmm. And I don't think nobody ever stomped on the floor harder than George. You could hear George stomping from across the room. Mm -hmm. And the stomp, the stomp is actually a part of the ritual mm -hmm. in the part in the dance <clears throat> that when the woman, because the dance, for you know, in my interpretation of it, okay, and I'm not an instructor, but when I dance with a woman and if she's moving in a certain way and we somehow, you know, get on, something happens where we click and that vibe comes, the next thing you know, I, boom, I stomp, you know. But you know what, though, Reggie, here's the thing. I think, like, for me, when when we danced minus all of this technical uh mumbo jumbo you certain people you danced with you just had an automatic vibe it was there you just you knew and you moved together it was like a it was rhythmic it was a a dance and you know now it's kind of like everybody is trying to you know keep up with these numbers oh what where, where you at you know or trying to you know fit into this mold that's been set that is now being referred to as stepping um, Reggie, right quick sidebar. Uh, I, I, it just occurred to me the other day you, uh, were interviewing, uh, Barry Heilig, um, uh, on that video that you played from the Beverly house, there's a guy in that video by the name of Butch. I asked the question on your show and I'm putting this out there for anybody who knows, does anybody know where Butch is? Mm. Light skinned guy on there. Uh, with the champagne glass, my, my man Butch. I ain't seen Butch in years. Wow, man. Okay. love who that dude is. Now, speaking of Hylix, um, Charlie just put on here that that's why you leave it on the wood. You get in the dance and you go home. <laughs> so she, talking about the conversation with the men, uh, the conversations after the dance. She said she do the dance, get up out of there. Smart move. Uh, Charlie said Butch lives in Las Vegas. Really. Okay, I need to I need to connect up with him. I, mean, I ain't seen Butch in ooh, how long, baby? Twenty years. Damn, might be longer than that. Yeah. Um. So yeah, man. It, you know, there there there's some things in this dance to me, Reggie, that just they they can't be taught. They just can't. Um. You know, you can make reference to it, or you can try and explain it to some people, but you and I have a point of reference because we experienced it and we were a part of the fabric that made up the culture of this dance and there are many who will never understand that um somebody made the comment i can't remember who it was it was uh i want to say it was it was um my man out of vegas uh uh dave super dave he said his wife said there will never be another period like the times we came up in stepping that was like the golden years it's 
it's it's just it'll never be like that again. I don't know. I think I I think I agree with her. I don't know. Well, well, one of the reasons why it probably won't be, and we can jump back into this, is because of the styles of music. Hmm. <laughs> Okay, the styles of music. I had, you know, in my class, right, you know, uh, my classes, and I had my students uh, doing their, their final presentations, and I presented to them uh, my, my presentation on, to, on history of bopping, and stepping, and walking. Mm -hmm. And... And I asked, and I'm going to ask the kids tomorrow, I mean, the young people, and then I'm going to film them and film their responses. Mm -hmm. The young girls, the younger ladies, they want to partner dance. Mm -hmm. They want to partner dance. But the dudes ain't, ain't with that. And also the music is messed up. Woo. And they and the, the young girls they are saying that the music is messed up. Well, uh, now I don't know, I don't know. There are there are people that that grew up in this that grew up and they they grew up under this the hip hop culture, right? I mean, and and I'm good with that. But there's a difference between hip hop dancing and stepping. An incredible difference. And the thing is, is that it's like two cultures. You can consider hip hop like being at the disco or the disco party. Mm -hmm. Because when you, you just dancing and doing your thing. But when you come to stepping, it's like coming to stepping. For our generation, and this is just me thinking now, we grew up with it. Uh, a lot of people now, they're not growing up with it, you know, because it's not a rite of passage. It's not passed on to the families and stuff like that. It's being bought. It's being bought and taught. Okay, well, let's just let's just put it down. It's being bought and it's being bought and taught. And so okay. that makes a difference. Now, I I and I said this and I'm going to say this again. And I'm not knocking anybody that likes hip hop or stuff like that. But in the stepping community, I cannot see myself dancing to a song that refers to a woman as a garden tool or a female dog. I can't do that. Well, well, I can't do that. Here, what you say, Forbes? Here, here's the thing. Uh, first, let me shout out Casper in the building. I see you, my man. Um, here's the thing, man. There are people who you will hear say things like, well, you can step to anything, which is true. However, I don't feel like I need to dance to just anything in order to justify the bastardization of what I've come to love all my life uh, to satisfy those who are not familiars. There's no need for steppers to have to dance to songs that refer to women as garden tools or female dogs. It's not necessary. It is a partner dance. It is to elicit a dance between two people to create a connection. There is no connection when you are listening to music that has nothing that you can connect to. The people who want to hear that are people who are more interested in connecting to their music, their past, than they are to the person that they're dancing with. I don't know. I mean, even, even in this, let's use the 70s. You had the different music that was played, you know, the Isley Brothers were real popular, you know. You had all of the bands, the funk bands. Even most of them had some song, even Bootsy Collins had songs that would make you go, hey. But I give Shawnee Simmons, like, mad credit for coming out 
with that T-shirt, that slogan, Chicago stepping is a whole vibe. If people truly understood just how deep that slogan really is, there has to be like, like, let's talk about vibrations. Let's talk about energy. When you talk about being in this dance, connected to somebody, what do you really want to be connected to? Do you want to be connected to a rhythm, a, a, a tone, the way the music flows and comes across, that particular stepper's groove that we are accustomed to? Or do you want to hear boom, 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 like you either at a hip hop set or a house set? No stepper shit, no stepper set should come off like a frat party. It's not what we're doing here. That's not what this is for. And all I can think of is in the future, you're going to have a bunch of people sitting around drinking lean, smoking, or whatever they do, and playing this hip hop music and then saying, okay, y'all step to this. Let's do this. You know, and, and a bunch of guys standing around me mugging each other. Don't know what it is to have any kind of uh, 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 connection to a female that's meaningful or or any type of just energy that goes between the two of them, except, you know, some hip hop song that ain't talking about some mumble music that ain't talking about nothing. I'm, I'm sorry. I And call me biased. It just is what it is, man. And in the grand scheme of what we're doing or what this is or what this, you know, once was, I'm not trying to see what I love destroyed for the sake of what I have no idea. And the only people that but I, I step off of no diggity, though, huh? I step off of no diggity. Hey, listen, I'm not even knocking all of it. All I'm saying is. Because because he is the thing, Reggie. Music is forever, man. Music ain't going nowhere. Music is is universal. Music is like love making. I don't care what country you go to. I don't care what race or a, a group of people that you encounter. Music is going to touch all of them some kind of way. But the thing is this: there's a time and a place for everything, and I don't want to go to a hip-hop set and a stepper set breakout i don't want to go to a stepper set and a hip-hop set breakout right that's oh that is that is right there that is right there now look i ain't knocking nobody do what you do just call it something else just 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 do your thing we ain't mad because so far at last count the only people trying to inject all of this negativity into our community are people who are not from our community they're always from somewhere else and they got all these big ideas come on man stepping didn't ask for nobody to come uh visit it because guess what if stepping had never left the city of chicago guess what we would still be doing in the city of chicago the same way up in detroit they still gray stoning and ballrooming the yep. same way you go to Dallas or Houston, they still swinging out. They don't care what nobody else is doing. And in Chicago, we don't care what nobody else thinks they're going to do with this dance. You can do it anywhere else you want to do it. Call it something else and go on and do your thing. We ain't mad. Just give it a different name. Don't piggyback off something that gave you the, gave you the, 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 the room to do what you're doing. Because check this out. Reggie, do you know what an egress is? No, what's that? Look, Professor, do you know what an egress is? No, what's that? A cattle egress. Let me tell you what it is. A cattle egress, there are actually two types. The two types I'm going to refer to. There's a white one and there's a brown-headed one. Now, the egress is a bird. If you ever go past a cattle, a uh, 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 herd of cattle in a field, particularly here in the South, you'll see little white birds hanging around the cows. And some of them actually sit on the backs of the cows. Well, these egress are using the cows, riding on the backs of the cows so they can eat. Because when the cows move around, of course, you know, they attract flies. 
the egress he flies. They 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 kick up dust in the field and they move insects around so that the egress sit on the back of the cow. They can see them. They swoop down, they get them and they eat. Or they eat the flies right off the backs of the cows. See, an egress is like a is like a parasite. Now they help the cows to some degree, but they eat because the cows exist, because the cows make it possible. Mm. See, I look at these people who want to make all these changes as cattle egress. Without stepping, the cow is stepping. They have nothing. Sort of like a leech. Mm. A leech has to attach itself to something in order to eat. Mm. It ain't going to go just be a leech without something to eat. See, detach the leech from the host and what do you have? Remove the cattle. What do the egress have? Mm. See, get off the back of stepping. Mm. Go do something else and don't be a parasite. You know, uh, I done seen a good one. I got this question. I seen it. It says, should stepping have stayed in Shot town to keep it authentic? Uh, That's a loaded one. Well, uh, listen, when when Steppen left, I'm not sure what left out was authentic. <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? Well, I mean? Look at it this way. What? Well, I mean, the people who took it out took it with good intent. They had their intentions were good. And what they did was they formatted it in a way to make it easily teachable. Which okay, now, now okay, now listen, now listen. Let me let me let me put the brakes on that cuz I agree with you 100%. But this is this is where this is where a lot of this stuff is like it's like no national stepping, okay? It's like no, you know, one size fit all stepping. When you learn from James Brown, okay, and I'm just using the name. Mm -hmm. When James Brown came to your town, you learn the James Brown method of stepping. <laughs> right. When when Marsha Renee came to your town, you learn the Marsha Renee style of stepping. Now, look, this is really nothing new because there were the Arthur Murray dance studios. There were the Fred Astaire dance studios, right? right. <laughs> you know? Well, and mean, they were right, look, now, just right quick, to add a little quick history to what you're saying, a lot of people don't know that a lot of the moves that you see in stepping came from Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers and some of those other dancers, uh, 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 Nicholas Brothers and so on. A lot of the stepping moves that were done back in the day was because cats literally sat around and watched these movies and took these moves and brought them to the skating rinks, to the dungeon, to the clubs. Now, so, uh, so all I'm saying, all I'm saying is that whoever was moving this dance should have named it with their own name. That's all I'm saying. Yep. If you was, if you was, uh, if you was learning, well, one person attempted to do that. <laughs> when I, when I'm not going to go there, <laughs> you yeah. know, but, but that's what people should have done. That way the dance or stepping won't be so confused because I see, a, listen, I don't care if you were, if you did, if you do the 32 count, the 144 count, the 99 count. I'm uh, because I'm a dancer. I'm going to try to find the vibe with you. Right. And that's why I was always telling that lie to the women. I mean, excuse me. I was always introducing, <laughs> <laughs> introducing myself to yeah, the yeah. women saying <laughs> I can't step. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that was only to tell you that what you've learned in your classes, I'm not going to do. Well, see, what you should have said was not you can't step. You are not familiar with this format. It, that's that. right. With that instruction. Exactly. Here, exactly. Here's, here's the thing, man. And this is, I'm going to tell you where all of this got lost. People who took the dance to other states with the intent of spreading it the way that it has been sort of the Johnny Apple seeds of the steppers world. What happened was as they provided 
the knowledge of the dance to others throughout the country, which was a good thing. What happened was you had individuals who at that point who had been taught in my best estimation by competent individuals, because I know who some of these people are and I know that they were capable of giving this information correctly and thoroughly. The problem becomes that you have individuals who, and I know some, call themselves instructors now today, and they are the byproduct of people who never been to Chicago, people who didn't know enough about the dance, the culture, or the history to really be teaching any of it. Because if you don't know those three things, you have no business teaching this dance. And I'm saying that to any, I don't care who toes is step on. I don't care who gets upset. That's a fact. Uh, if you, when they taught this thing, and this is sort of, this is the watering down of it all, right? The watering down part comes in because they're not able to give the future dancers in their region the proper information. I had on one of my last visits home, we had a young lady with us who had been dancing now for a couple of years. Now, she was given basic information. Her instructor, what? Who? Her instructor was one of those people who insisted that all she wanted to do was, all we want to do is dance. We just want to dance. Well, she came to Chicago and she went to Donnie, that we took her to Donnie Davis and Donnie Davis and his people divided up a bunch of individuals and put her in a beginner's situation. She didn't mind going, but it enlightened her as to just how much she didn't know. Now, the person who gave her the information had good intentions, but she herself was the product of someone who had been led wrong as well. So the watering down takes place when you start to track back to the individuals who provided information to somebody that was wrong. Then that person started to provide information to somebody else that was wrong. And then next thing you know, we all lost in the sauce and the people who are coming out of that area, that region are all suffering. Now, you know, now, you know, Forbes, now, you know, me, uh, you know me, if you didn't learn walking when you was being instructed, you, you know, <laughs> you still messed up, <laughs> you, know, you know, you know, you know, I ain't going to never let that go. Right. If you're not walking, if you know. Casper, Casper got it in one of his songs called Hold Up, you know, because if you're not walking with your stepping, you're not a real stepper. Well, you know? I, I don't disagree with you. I mean, but that, that's what we came up on, though, Reggie. I mean, but you also have to also you got to look at where we are socially, too, now at this point. And I'm saying that only because, for example, you were you were on the show uh, watching when I interviewed Denise uh, Harrod Burrow out of LA for mm -hmm. Harlem Heights. And her and I were having a discussion about walking and she made the comment that the ladies in her area, which is out there in California, Long Beach, were not as privy to walking because of the level of, of what they thought was a high level of intimacy within yeah, the Yeah, 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 yeah. I like, I like that. Now, the problem is not that they are not they don't have competent instruction which she and she made clear that they had a good instructor and i'm not going to say that that individual is not good but i am going to say that that individual has not been able to provide them with thorough and proper information because if he were he would have made it clear to them that you can walk and not have to be in a man's face you can walk and there are ways to walk that are considered more uh, uh, appropriate, particularly if you are a person that is involved with someone else and you don't want that level of intimacy. They are not teaching this the way that they should in most cases. So well, walking gets a black eye when it shouldn't 
But the people who are teaching it should get the black eye because they're not giving it to them properly. Well, next week for, for certain, next week for certain, I, you know, and I'm glad I went to the grand ballroom. Uh, I'm glad I went to the 38th anniversary of good times because I finally, I finally got two legendary dancers. Okay. All right, man. And it's, if it's going to be all about walking mm -hmm. next week, uh, I have Buford Finley and Lester Gibbs mm -hmm. and it, don't miss it next week. Okay. That's all I'm just telling. Don't miss don't, the don't conversation miss the next week is going down. Yeah. Don't and miss it next people, week. People need to, they need to understand what, what, see when you don't have a point of reference, you don't know what you're looking at. And there are people who've never actually seen people walk the way that we're talking about. And as a matter of fact, a proper walking instructor will teach the ladies that there are ways basically to protect yourself from unwanted uh proximity there it, there's a million things and see this is this all goes back to history culture clarity understanding of what you're doing when you have instructors who cannot articulate what it is that you're doing and what you're supposed to be doing Forbes, like Austin Forbes, I'm gonna, Forbes I'm gonna tell you I'm gonna tell you uh most of the most many of the instructors that I've seen teaching the walk on these videos outside of outside of some of the elders in Chicago, Lawrence, Buford, Lester, and some of the and James Shank, some of the, they have no idea what the walk is all about. Because number one, and Chelsea explained it. Mm -hmm. Chelsea, Chelsea explained it. Number, out Chelsea. She's done some fantastic interviews. Number, number one, number one, number one, the intimacy of the dance is in that woman's mind. <laughs> you know, cause and there is no execution of no, although in dancing, there was an execution where bodies were pressed upon one another. But we did, I did that when I was, before I got, you know, before I got 17, <laughs> you know, because we call that grinding. <laughs> but, but you see, even in, 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 I mean, and you're older than me, in the times when we were coming up, that was actually a thing. That was, you know, the ladies didn't mind being that close to you you didn't mind being close that close to them and the ones who weren't interested stayed over there on the wall out the way and you know and it's not to say that it's not still that way but we have less instances particularly at any you go to any club nowadays nobody plays slow music they don't they don't have a, a period where they stop and turn the lights down and people slow dance they don't do that no more all they right let's talk about that Let's talk. Let's talk. Let's talk about yep. that. Let's talk about that right now. I say, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's a and it's a shame to me. That's why. See, we again, we live in an information age. We live in a time period where everybody's like this. They only they got their phone and they they just like this all the time. You go in the club right now. People supposed to be drinking, enjoying themselves, and partying. They on their phone. People are not engaged with each other. They're not engaging each other. They're not making small talk conversation. If a man say hello to a woman these days, all of a sudden he thirsty. And it's just a bunch of the, the, the social cues today are way off. People's social skills have, uh, that word evolved again, have changed into something that I'm unfamiliar with. And I'm gonna, I ain't gonna lie to you. I'm glad I'm not growing up in this era with this nonsense that's going on. I don't, I don't, I just, I think it's ridiculous. And it's a shame that people do not have the ability to socialize with one another. You know, I, I mean, it was a time if we went out, like you meet a chick, uh, you get her number. Hey, uh, let's go to the show. Hey, let's go eat. That was how you got to know somebody. Now you got to talk to them on a text message for four years before they say, okay, well, we can finally go out and eat something. Yeah. Like, what is that? I, I, and I don't get me wrong. I know we, again, we live in a different time. People are crazy as hell these days. So I kind of get it. But on the other hand, Look at where the look at where socialization has gone. It's terrible. Yeah, well, you know, we uh now and I'm gonna go out on the limb. You know, we can we can holler, we can holler about you know the the deficiencies of what our youth 
you know, what they going through, but, you know, on what they dealing with, but they didn't make this self, you know, yeah, and yeah. there you go. I agree with that. They didn't, they didn't, they didn't, they didn't make this self. And right. Billy, Billy Preston made a song. He made a song and it was famous. He said, nothing from nothing leaves nothing, leaves nothing. And so we can't, we can't, we can't expect too much from them if we didn't give them too much. In well, the I first did my place. job. That's all I'm gonna say. I got. Yeah, to amen. A amen. Amen. And I, amen. And and then see the enemy. The enemy has always put that blockade or uh, a block in between. You know, he the enemy is steadily trying to destroy. You know. The, the family right and all this kind of stuff and the first thing one of the first arguments and things that's happening is when the young is pitted against the old mm -hmm. you know and this happens even in our own families one of the things that I loved about uh, the social partner dance community and my guest next week is going to talk about that is that it was really cool for the older cats to want to talk to you. Mm -hmm. And the younger cats was, I mean, I mean, I was hungry to listen. It was like going into the barber shop, man. You just want to hear the old cat. You want to hear them stories. You hear the stories. You wanted to hear how they handled the stories. Yeah, yeah. Listen, and I Sit there and like we lost that. We we lost that. Right. We lost that because Everything there's like no official, yeah. official yeah. rite of passage for us in this dance. What I you agree. say? And it, not not just the dance, but just in our day to day life. I mean, you know, one of the things that I that I constantly preach or put out that I need people to really wrap their mind around is that the Steppers community is nothing more than a microcosm of a macro world. We are a society within society. We are not large in number. Therefore, the opportunity for the weirdness, the strange behaviors, the illness, the addiction, all of the things that we suffer from in a day-to-day, -day, we have people who have gone through all manner of um, uh, tragedy, uh, I mean, you name it. We have people in this community have been through some stuff, man. And because of that, the dance comes with a million different personalities. Some folks got three or four within them themselves. <laughs> <laughs> and they come to this dance and we have to learn how we have to be able to coexist in this community. And it goes back to what Charlie said earlier on one of her comments. It's like you go to the spot, you get your dance on and you leave it on the wood because factually, if we tried to take on the baggage of many of us, we would be man. Look, this this thing, I mean, it's, it's bad enough that like we have people right here within the community. And I find this interesting who one day I saw a post today where somebody was talking about how one day. Matter of fact, it was um, uh, Samela wrote it. Um, DJ Smella, she was saying how, you know, one minute a person is your best friend, your greatest champion. I mean, your greatest fan. And they, and they, 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 they lift you up and talk great about you and so on and so forth, but you fall out with them. And the next thing you know, you everything but a child of God to them. And when you think about what causes us to behave that way, the fact is, we, you know, these people generally were never friends with you in the first place. They have a need of you rather than a need for you. And one thing that I've learned, and this is why I've had to be very careful about the people that I allow in my circle, particularly these days, is that familiarity breeds contempt. And the more people think they know you, the more the more likely they are to treat you differently than when they first met you. That level of respect disappears. I had an individual hit me up not too long ago to tell me, that they were no longer going to participate in my show and uh, they was cool on me and a bunch of other stuff, which for me was like, why are you in your feelings? I have no idea. 
I had somebody else get mad because of a comment that I made. Uh, they felt like they had been slighted, which was <laughs> not only not my intent, but I don't even understand why they went there. <laughs> what, Reggie? I can't, I can't look. If you throw rocks at every barking dog, you'll never get where you go. I'm not yeah. gonna stop and throw rocks at them. I look, no more power to you. I ain't got no heaven or hell to put you in. I love you. Keep it moving. But I'm saying all of this to say that we have a lot of personalities to deal with within this community. Yeah, we have a lot, and and people like you and I, especially, have to be very wary and careful about how we handle these people because what we don't want to do is turn a bunch of people off and it's going to happen regardless. We know yeah, you can't, you can't, you can't please and get everybody. That's so right. that's gonna only thing, easy. only thing you could do is, uh, stay true to the course that you've charted for that's yourself. It. They'll find now, a reason to, to, to have contempt for you because so of listen. their proximity. They think that they, they become familiar and familiarity breeds contempt. So I got to say, Carl, uh, you know, Carlene, she uh put she said people you know they're making this comment because they have been referring to josiah mm -hmm. uh josiah bird uh who who has uh documented you know the me his methodology with uh with stepping and so right. so Kali makes his point it. saying only, that the only the only documentation of stepping in the library of congress yeah, so that that's good. So, and this is why Colleen's uh, 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 comment is important. She said, "You know, Josiah came after our generation right. of Bopper. Right. You know, none of us ever thought about Ginger Rogers and Fred Astaire when yeah, we that was for the, that was the stepping crowd that came uh, on the heels." of the bops of the bop and those who were the uh, elder boppers. Cause you got to remember that, that generation, Joe and them, that was early seventies, early to mid seventies. And they were all uh, moving toward the dance as a battle rather than the bop as a, that was, that was the new bop. That was right. officially, that was officially titled the new right. bop before it was called the clarion, the clarion song for that. When JB hit, Right. You just give me some more. Yeah. That, just, that yeah, that just that Mo. turned everything upside down. And the because the younger was, cats, the younger cats at that time, they started, they took the dance from one hand and they started doing it with two. Because right. before look, that time, wanna, boppers only bopped with one hand. Go ahead. You want you want to see a skate and rink jump? Let them put that one song on. And the whole skating rink go nuts. You got a, about a hundred cats in the middle of the floor stepping, and you got about another two hundred people on the floor clowning skating. <laughs> that was them two went together, man. That was right. that was it. So, so that JB thing, but so that the new Bob and most of the cats that the early steppers, the first generation of the first generation of steppers. We'll tell you, and Colleen is one of them. They will tell you that they were bopping. They will tell you that because that. Yeah, I mean, listen, what 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 I learned when I talked about my first steps in this dance in '75, they were teaching me the bop. We mm -hmm. didn't call it stepping. So, I mean, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you know. So, a matter of fact, the whole term stepping didn't even really catch on like that until the late '70s. Right. And but here's the thing, and and I couldn't get. I got Luther to say it, but I couldn't get. I, I've been I've been trying to. I got to get that dog on Barnett, but I kind of know why Barnett is doesn't come out here. You know he won't come out. Say, but Barnett, Luther, and a couple of more guys, they were in a club called the Steppers. Mm. Okay, and they were they were in early seventies that they had now the song the stepper was released by the soulful strings in 1968 mm -hmm. so the name had been out there but it just you know it got popular through sam the story goes with sam referring to donnie draper dancing he said man they look like they stepping and then next thing you know that dance became, that was it. Because we weren't going around saying, man, I'm going out to bop. <laughs> that's right. that's right. you, 
you said, man, I'm going out to oh, dance. Right. You, and it, all you had to do was say what club it was on whatever night of the week, and everybody knew what you was going to do. What no, right. what no, like name like we going to do this that that just wasn't a thing yeah we were just going we were just going out dancing and dancing for us and you got to go back to black mary's dream okay mm -hmm. and she said this uh as i i as a matter of fact i think i, I should have played it i got her on tape you know saying it but she said this to me over and over again mm -hmm. when the disco era started to come out <laughs> Okay, when the disco era was coming out, they banded together. Mm -hmm. Our people banded together to preserve the DJs and the music the way it was being played. Right. Because everybody, everybody was going into this disco thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. They they would they was going into that. And so we wanted to steal what well, Black Mary and her crew, that group, wanted to keep the social partner dance sets alive. See, because right. when you go to a disco mm -hmm. and when you go to a hip hop party, mm -hmm. you don't have to have a partner. Nope. Let's let's be clear well, about that. Let's also while you add it, I mean, let's add let's add the um the whole because see right on the right at right on the heels of the disco era, you had punk rock, which then shifted into house. You didn't need no partner for none of that, right? Uh, and and yeah, you're right. And 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 guess and the only people who were still social partner dancing was if you were at a set and there was slow dancing or uh it was stepping going on period and all right good good to see good to see uh alita uh lee uh lawrence's wife and good to see andrea uh we had a great hug on yesterday alma and willie jordan and all all of you everybody that's weighing in listening to me and forbes go at it we've been going at it <laughs> you know, <laughs> you, oh, know. Hey, you know what right quick side note um, I forgot to mention because you know earlier you asked uh you asked you know about who was Brian Forbes and I I neglected to mention um you know for those of you out there who don't know I've authored a book by the name that's called The Black Factor that's how my show started I had to spin off of that and also I have a published print you can google it it's called Choices Brian Forbes Choices some stuff I did some years ago just to add, just to show you you know just going on that resume thing I forgot about all that stuff see this is what I'm talking about when people people don't ask me <laughs> the stuff that i do and i forget sometimes the stuff i've done so amen just throwing that out there i'm a, amen. Uh, yeah if you see behind me matter of fact that's that's my print back there that's choices on the wall and um also yeah nike's nike's always got it on his interview and also um this is this is a copy of my book the black factor good and also <laughs> Uh, for those who don't know, I'm also a jeweler. All the jewelry y'all see me wearing, all the big rings and the pleats, I make all of that. I'm, I handcraft all of that. Sterling silver, stone, gemstones, all that stuff. So 50 years from now, 50 years from now, this is being archived when somebody feels like they want to have an interest in knowing about what was happening in the 2000s and stuff with Stepping is here. Because when you digitize something, and this is what one of my other guests, June Moon, the creator of uh, Stepping at Club 7 said, "Yeah, it's forever. It's forever. And it's out so, there. Once it's out there, baby, it's out there. And so, and I want to really, I really want to reach out to, I, I want to say, say this. It's been a lot of guys, uh, when I went into the uh, Grand Ballroom yesterday, you know, and you know, the elders hang out at the shoe shop and one of my guys, yeah, yeah. Yeah. one of the elders say, I'm man, Reggie, you, you need to come back. You need to come back to the thing. So I got to go back and make my trip. I love the shoe shop, man. Yeah. I got to make my trip down there on Saturday yeah. because one of the things, and I'm really proud of the fact that I've, I've, I'm talking to the elders and I, and people from our generation, they really don't want to talk. I know. And I tell it's them, I, I and I tell them, I said, listen, listen. And I and I plead it. I've been pleading with people. I said, listen, you can't take this to the grave with you. Man, 
Reggie, don't listen. do that. I just say, ready. I was just getting ready to tell you what to tell them. Yeah, I I said, don't 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 take it. I say because see, because when we gone, there won't be no confusion. Hey, like the confusion is today. I just see, told an elder. Yes, two days ago. Yeah, called, yeah, yeah this, wrong about something. Cause it's a lot of it's a lot of it's a lot of confusion I told that's my going on about about this dance now and and then a lot of things now about the dance now and about these stories and about the history and whatever you know I won't I won't answer them I won't answer and get involved with that because I'm I'm not omnipresent you know <laughs> I wasn't there if, you know I wasn't there and I can't say. But if you feel that way, I'm never, I'm never going to argue with a person about how they feel about, you know, the day I won't even address it, right. you know, because there are certain things that, you know, I feel strongly about. And I know there are certain things that you feel strongly about. Mm -hmm. And at the time when you might be feeling strong or you might be in a situation where you know about this, I might not have any knowledge of that. Now, listen now, but if I'm not the type of person that, listen, I am a researcher. <laughs> you know, your homework that I had a receipt, man. I'm going, I'm going, I know how to look for stuff. And if it gets to be the point, if it gets to be to a point where I need to, you know, apologize and make a correction, I got no problem with that. Right. Because it's all about it's it's been too many lies Ooh. that have been told. Because most of the stories that have been told by the evangelists that have moved this dance out, mm -hmm. the history began with them. But it's like you said it. You know, you got there's too many of them. Matter of fact, when you did your presentation at Stepaganza this year, what did I say? I I I, I stood there with a microphone in my hand speaking to. A multitude of elders and i explained to them if y'all don't help us set this record straight there's only so much reggie that you and i can say absolutely if they are not the ones to set the record straight the record will forever be confused and unlike and, and i just told an elder the other day in a conversation very similar to this and what you just said i said listen man what i need you to understand is that ain't none of us getting no younger and y'all are older than me. So if you don't give us this information to carry forward and make sure that the record is correct and straight, they call and they complain. How are you going to call and complain to me when you're not giving me the proper information to be able to put forward or saying what needs to be said? Because some stuff just needs to be said and it cannot be said by you or I. It has to be one of them. Right. I try and, to explain it. and I said, don't, you know, Ty Skippy. Who knew Ty Skippy was about to check up out of here? Do you know how much information that man took with him? Mm -hmm. We'll never get it. Mm -hmm. It's home. We'll never get his perspective on this dance or where we are or how we got here based on his idea or thought on this culture. Man, Ty Skippy, little Charlie. <laughs> yeah. You know, no, Mike, you can go that, down, you can go down the list of great cats that you know that have gone. Said, there's a multitude of them. I'm only using Man. him as a as a as right. a, an example because of his recent passing and the fact that we know his history. We know something about his history in this dance, and we know that he was one of the, the superstars of the dance. But his the knowledge that he, he has, he took it with him. We can't get the, that. Uh, and the uh, I mean, Slim didn't get a chance to deal with Slim. And then I mean, on from from my era, I mean, not look. James Shanks is born on my. We were born on the same day, mm -hmm. you know. But Shanky is two years, you know, my two years over me, and I was just. I was Shanks had said, "Yeah, Red, come on, let's do it." And then two weeks later, he was in the hospital, and then he didn't come up out the hospital. Now, just talking about the gospel, the gospel walk from him, mm -hmm. that would, that would. The points that he's making is are absolutely accurate. And the fact is, we do not need, and I encourage 
because we have elders on this line. We have people who understand this history and who know these things in this dance on this line. And I'm going to, again, appeal to many of you to make sure that you if you you know, you may not like the way I present my show. You may not like the way Reggie presents his show. Find one of us who is willing to have you come forward and speak about your experience in the dance. You don't have to prove nothing about what anybody else does or has done or had done. All you, all we look for you to do is tell your story. And if you do that, you not only help us to help the rest of the people around the community, but you leave a legacy uh, as your part in this digital history that we have Man. by giving us this information to carry forward. And I'm telling you, you know, that's important. Man, I mean, like I said, I got the Lord help me. Lord, give me. I got you good, it. Reggie. You good, baby. You Look, know, yeah, I'm 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 back. On the line with you. I got you. <laughs> yeah, well, that's good. So that's 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 how that's what happens when you fill in the gap. I, I got kicked out of my own program. Now you know that's <laughs> hey, something. It happens, baby. It happens. <laughs> but uh, but it's but it's it's still going. And so this listen, this oral history. The history that Mr. Forbes is taking with documenting the world's largest, all these various sets and stuff like that. Listen, there won't be there. There's evidence now of how we lived and what we did. Mm -hmm. I come from the lost generation. I came from the 70s. There's just photographs of us. That's okay, it. there's just photographs of because us. If anybody had a video camera, they was rich. <laughs> Man. And this generation, this generation now, the, the dancers that are doing the dance that they, everything is cool. The Forbes, the only thing that I hate about a lot of stuff that's being videoed is the same cats all the time. I can't stand that. Well, I mean, you can't, the thing about that is that I mean, you can't you can't blame anybody for that because you have to think of it this way. No matter what genre of dance, no matter what social activity or whatever we do out here, there are always going to be individuals who shine harder and brighter than others in that community, no matter what it is, not just the dance. And because of that, you that person have, can only that. dance with one person at a time. How you yeah, gonna? But, but you're gonna. But but it, it ain't. They're not the ones doing the videotaping though. It's the no. general audience. It's the people who want to see them dance. Let well, me wait a minute that. though, Forbes. Wait a minute though, Forbes. We got people in our community. We got we got people at our levels. That's all they do is well, is, give, is deal with that. Denise Steiger is great about videotaping people in the community that are not always the popular people. Now that's now that's the kind of stuff. Yeah. That's the kind of stuff. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. But we need uh 10 more Denise. But well, if now, but I, if it's a hundred people I, out here, if it's a hundred people out here taking videos, mm -hmm. uh 80% of them videos is gonna be of a heavy hitter. Yeah. I tell you let me tell you something funny that happened. When we were at world's largest this year, right? I um provided my own Wi-Fi, my own internet uh, in that situation. Like, you know, we do it a lot of places we go because it was not available in the building. And right when Sean Bandy and Drew Alexander took the stage, my Wi-Fi went nuts. We could not, <laughs> we kept dropping signal like it was going out of style. And do you know why? I found out after I spoke with my carrier after that happened, it was people that was getting it. Everybody and they mama had a phone out. Bandwidth. I found right? out that even when you take your phone out to take a picture, it pings the tower. Which yeah. Means there was so much internet going on in that building. Right. On Wi-Fi at that. I mean, for cell service at that time, it literally killed my feed. Yeah. So I said all that to say, the popularity of those two gentlemen up there on stage dancing. Uh, was one that is definitely archived. There are, uh, in fact, I saw some other great dances that night that did not get the airplay that they should have because we don't have a hundred Denise Steigers, the video queen out here, which, you know, uh, again, I, I encourage uh, more people to delve into the realm that you and i are in just know it ain't it, you got it's something that you got to dedicate yourself to you have to be you know really interested in it because it's not easy 
and it definitely ain't cheap. <laughs> so just know that. <laughs> right. That's right. The audio costs an arm and a leg, and Ooh. the video could cost an arm and a leg. Bro, I stay you don't get it right. This. I look, I just bought some more new equipment here recently, and I can't wait. I can't wait because I'm trying to make listen. My goal with the presentation of inside stepping at these different events is to make sure that we have seamless presentation. We have seamless video that you can literally sit at home on your couch and watch the events that we participate in live and in living color with a you know Forbes. Yeah. You know Forbes uh is as much as as much as I would want to, I I want to do that and I want to see see it done like that. Only fiber give us what we want though. But wireless will never give us what we really need. Only fiber. We need yeah. we need that fiber, man. And then just to get a line, that'll be too much of an expense. But that's that's man, once once you can get once you can get a hub to if you can get a hub at any place where they, they got to wire that'll be, with that cat five with that fiberglass yeah, that's, wire, that's, that'll be good. But, but that's if you can get it. But see here, yeah. you know. See, and here's the thing. Right now, you and I are talking technicals. And, and this is the side of the game that a lot of people, this is the part that the, the general public don't know nothing about. They see what we do. They see the presentation. They don't understand the cameras. They don't understand the sound. They don't understand the network, the Wi-Fi, the programs. And then to have all of that stuff and then learn how to use it all and make it work together. It ain't no joke. Now, you can sit up there with your cell phone. That's fine, you know, if that's what you want to do. Uh, there's room for that, too. Okay, but, Forbes. But when 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 is walking going to come back? Walking ain't went nowhere. When is walking going to come back strong? Nowhere. I mean, I did. Uh, when I, is walking I think gonna you've been back? instrumental <laughs> in making sure that it makes its uh, resurgence, if you will. Um, a lot of people love it. A lot of people enjoy it. I enjoy it. Uh, when my wife and I don't get a chance to step, we will still walk. Um, we will take an opportunity to I look, I, I take an opportunity to pull my wife in. Uh, <laughs> we, we we will get our walk on. You know what I'm saying? Um, I think that um, one of the things one of the things that has to happen is that. The DJs, you know, I mean, uh, just keeping it 100, there's a lot of stepping DJs out here. Uh, there's a lot of DJs who want to be stepping DJs and they're good, but they still don't understand that vibe because mm -hmm. of that. They are less likely to play the music that we want to hear as we walk. A lot of them now feel forced almost in some cases to play music for walkers. I am encouraged that I have gone so many places in the in the last year to two years and I see people walking. I think it is great. And I think, Reggie, it is probably gone a little further than you may even realize at this point. So be encouraged, my brother, that you have been instrumental in making sure that that is moving forward. Man, because I'm going to tell you. I'm gonna tell you, I was I was like pleasantly surprised uh, on last evening uh, because I, for the first time I walked in a walking uh, into a set in a long time that it was like in two wreck. I came at the right time because the walking run came up and I took to the I took to the flow like a like like a like a horse in a, going around the country. I was running that track. I had a ball. I I was possessed. I got possessed again and I went and I had a good time. And uh and then I didn't have to wait uh a, another two hours for it came. You know, I heard I understood I, the assignment. Man, and I just I said, Whoa. It. Somebody was listening. Somebody knew Reggie Miles was in the room and he wasn't gonna wait on no walking music. Somebody Man. And I don't even go. I don't even go to the up to the DJs no more, or nothing like that, until after they play some. And then, then I, uh, you know, I just say thank you and go ahead on. And then if I, I won't even talk about any sets no more that don't cater to some walking music. 
Mm -hmm. I won't. And because if I can't say anything good about you, I'm not going to say nothing. I'm going to just leave it there. And in order for a set for me to be good, I have to walk too. Because, you know, as one of the one of the guests, I think Andrea said it. Uh, somebody else has said it too. Uh, the dance or the social partner scene from Chicago is not just stepping. Mm -hmm. We need to make that clear. Well, you, you know, better stay know. away from you. Better stay away from them new schools, Jack. They go. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and, and I'm not, and I'm not even mad. They could be playing chopped and screwed, expecting you to walk to it. <laughs> yeah. Well, listen, and, and then now I don't even want, and I, and this is what I want to say, and 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 as far as what the new school is doing, I, I, I'm do what you want to do, because eventually, you know, new school is going to they're going to get older. And they're gonna have to come to where we at. Yeah. And, and so I'm I'm just yeah. the elders just need to to ramp up there. I should have put I should have put those videos up that I have of good time productions. They're set. Mm -hmm. And it was like it's the flow stayed packed. Everybody was dancing and they was, you know, uh it was a nice mixture of music. You couldn't tell if the song was uh, if it was like a newer steppers or, you know, or you, you could tell the dusties and things like that. You could tell the, the older songs, but it was just the flow. I think the flow at the sets have been lost now. Ooh, man. I think That's the terrible. flow has been lost. You know, I remember the days, Reggie, when you could go on, a, especially like even in the 50 yard line, but I remember even being up in the Godfather too. When it was over there on 87th and Stony. Mm -hmm. And that floor was so small. But you still have multiple people on the floor dancing. And everybody still had a good time. And wasn't no bumping and rocking in each other because of the flow. Because there are people. I had a, a conversation on one of my shows a few months ago. Where I tried as hard as I could to explain the flow of the dance to someone who refused to understand it because they had their own agenda and bottom line, the energy, the flow, the direction of where we are going in this dance was a, is, was a thing on the dance floor. Now I see people all the time, just kind of backing in each other and all sorts of stuff. And it's like, you know, what are you going to do, man? We, we, you know, I, I listen, when it comes to history in the past, in the future, one thing I'm very, very clear about: what was will not be again. Mm. Uh, we, as human beings, spend an awful lot of time saying, "When are we gonna get back to this? Or when are we gonna get back to that?" We're not. We're never going backwards. We're gonna always be moving forward. So even if we have some of the nostalgic ideas and thoughts and and practices to come back forward. But well, wait a minute, wait a minute, Forbes. Wait a minute, Forbes. Now I, I don't, I'm not trying to go. I'm not trying to go back. But how about stuff? If it wasn't broke, why are you trying to fix it? Because people have the dance was the culture. The culture was never broke, Mister Miles. Because there are people who are so far. Let's talk about. Let's talk about the money, Forbes. Let's talk about the money before we go. I mean, let's talk so, about the greed. Let's yes, talk sir, about man. the greed. Hey, look, I'm going to lace that one in there, too. <laughs> Ego-driven greed and individuals who think for some reason that they're going to get rich off steppers or they're more. You got to remember something now. The two things that have always gotten man into trouble, the need for greed and the need for fame. Mm -hmm. There are people who want to make a name for themselves. And in the process, they end up making a name for themselves, and it ain't a good one. It's mm. a shame to me when I hear particular individuals' names and nothing good is ever said. But that mm. is be that's their fault. It's because of what they have done. The works, their works, as is quoted in the Bible, their works is what has put them in that position. You have people who give to this game selflessly and thanklessly, constantly, in order to make things better for the community at large. And then you have others who are takers. In this world, you have givers and you have takers. 
Givers have to set limits because takers never will. Takers will constantly do everything in their power to extract as much as they can for themselves. They will inject as much BS as necessary in order for it to funnel back to them. This is the nature of the hum of a human being. It just so happens they're part of the steppers community. And unfortunately, the majority suffers when so many are self-centered in that way. They're Man, I'm just I'm you. just trying to figure out why our dance can't last for for hundreds of years like the walls. Well, Reggie, we haven't lasted hundreds of years. Our yeah, folks, okay. Let's, let's, let's back up. Okay. Now, let's, let's look, now you're getting into Black Factor territory. Let okay. Me, all right. All right. As a people, understand that as a free people, we're only a hundred and roughly and 50, four yeah. years. Okay. We're still developing in our own culture. Our own culture is in its infancy. We are still learning to coexist and we are still having to shed the conditioning that we've been put under mm. the brainwashing that we've suffered over the last hundred years. I'm sorry, over the last 450, 500 years since before 1690, when chattel slavery became a thing, mm. we have been conditioned. We've been whipped. We've been, we've been assaulted in so many ways all the way up to the systemic racism and barbarian uh behaviors that have been uh, that have been laying on our heads for all of this time even under so-called freedom so what we what we're doing is trying to find our way we're the only all people right. on this planet and particularly on this continent who do not have a history if you think about it if we start trying to trace back where we all came from, see, a lot of people don't even understand that a lot of black folks in America aren't even black as we know it. A lot of us came from the indigenous tribes, which many of were black, not African. I, the list goes on and on and on to all of the reasons why we don't even know who we are. Our dance, first, we have to learn to coexist and function with one another on on more productive levels we have so much economic power in this country that we don't even realize or use to our benefit yet if you want to be i mean if you want to be technical this dance is extra petty in the grand scheme of where we need to be as a people but now you know now you know when we hit this we're gonna be on another two hours so let's forget yeah, that you're right i'm gonna let it go and, let, <laughs> and, let, and, and, let, and then let's just do this give me give me a final thought on 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 what you what's in the future for for inside stepping and for brian forbes or what is it that you would like to see happen you know in the community share that in the community by and large, I would love to see our people use this dance as an excuse to coexist and love one another in ways that we don't in general society. Ultimately, that would be the best possible outcome for all of us. However, I know better. What I would like to see is particularly that benefits you and I is that our elder generations come forward and begin to speak about their own stories and their history in this dance and what they know in order to add to the quilt, the, the patchwork of what we have become to help us to solidify what was and what is to come so that those who are, who come behind us when we're long gone, will have something to refer back to kind of like how we all, uh, refer back to the video of the 1983 at the Beverly House. Many of those same people are still among us right here in the community. But I want to see a time and a place where we are able to coexist without all of the drama, without all the lies, without all the competition. But then that would be asking people to behave um, like civilized individuals. And we know that for many it's not going to happen, not because they don't want to, but they're just not able to. And I'm cool with that. But 
for inside, as far as inside stepping is concerned, moving into the future, we have every intent on bringing you the best quality product that we're able to under the circumstances of uh, finance and uh, ability. And we try not to limit those. And so as time moves on and our knowledge increases and our ability to do what we do increases, we're going to make sure that we can provide you with the show, whatever that is, wherever we are. We want to make sure that you get an opportunity to see what we see up close and personal from the, your living room couch. So <laughs> in the future, you can, uh, in order to help support that, Feel free to purchase yourself one of these beautiful inside stepping t-shirts. They are $20. We will be having a price increase at the first of the year. Um, you can get yourself one of these nice inside stepping towels, fellas. Keep your head dry while you're out there dancing. We have a few other products that we uh we have shoe bags and we have a few other products. And these are the little things that help us to continue to um provide our products for you so that. If you can't make it to an event for financial reasons, because you just can't go, because you don't want to go, if you want to be able to participate and have as much fun as we do, but do it at home, we want to be able to provide that for you. And it don't cost you nothing but a little bit of your time. All you got to do is turn on your TV, put it on YouTube, type in Inside Stepping, hit that subscribe button, and watch the show. Hey, I love y'all. Like, like how Tony Adway said, Reggie, uh, I love y'all. There ain't nothing you can do about it. And I'm going to mm. keep doing what we do here so we can continue to love on you from a distance and even close up when we see you. And let me let me also say this last thing. If you see me in public, because this has become an issue as of late, and I do not recognize you, please charge it to my head and not to my heart. As I stated earlier on here, I am terrible with names. I remember some faces. I am fortunate that my wife keeps me abreast when I see people. And, and that's and happened more than once where I've run into the same person three or four times. And I'm like, who is that? And she tell me who it is. <laughs> Look, y'all, it ain't personal. I promise you it's not. I don't I don't walk around with animosity. Uh, toward, well, I got a couple people, but they know who they are. I know who they are. So they, you ain't got to worry about that part. But. I don't walk around with this with this attitude. I'm not, you know, oh no, I'm better than this person and I'm not speaking to those people and I'm I'm too good. It ain't none of that. I ain't never been built like that. And one thing about me and everybody who knows me personally knows one thing. What you see is what you get. I'm the same dude every day, all day. Don't nothing change with me. It's just as simple as that. So when y'all see me out in public, if I don't know who you are, it don't matter. Show me love. I'm going to show you love right back, and let's keep it kicking. Let's keep it moving. Let's get out on the floor and do what we do. Simple as that, y'all. I love you. If I didn't love you, doggone it, I wouldn't be doing what I do. Man, boy, you, you know the mouse is working real good now. <laughs> so, At the end of the show. <laughs> yeah. At the end of the show. Yeah, that's how that goes, buddy. Look, I look, man, you preach to the choir, baby. I understand. Yeah. So uh I hope I I hope I hope I did you right. I hope uh I hope we got through the things that uh I hope we got through. we we covered a lot. Reggie, we 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 covered a lot, but you know, brother, it's always a lot more to cover, man, and we can't do it all at one time. So right, right, right. Yeah. So so hopefully, we'll have to yeah, hopefully the people got something from it, man. That's all I care about. Yeah, we'll we'll have to do it again because you know, uh, your position. What and what is your position? I don't know. Good. Look, I don't know, and I don't know where we going. Listen, man, I'm, I I do this every day by the seat of my pants, baby. I promise you, I do. Mm -hmm. What do you what, what do you mean, my position? What is that? What you know? Uh, I mean, what's your niche? You know, my niche is my niche is history. Oh, in terms of this show, yes, yes. whatever. Whatever okay, we can do, good. whatever we look, man, I'm open. You understand me? If I listen, if somebody come to me with an idea and be like, hey, man, you know, it'd be really good if you could cover this or you could do that. And, you know, for 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 this thing. Um, look, man, I'm we we open, you know, the, the whole covering events uh, live in-house 
I'm not even sure where I got that from. I'm not even mm-hmm. sure what happened. I think the first one we did was Texas Heat last year. Uh, and it went well. Um, and from there, we just kind of said, okay, you know, let's let's start kind of, you know, covering some of these events. That was pretty cool. Let's do it again. So we started doing it again. And before you know it, you know, people who have certain events, they're like, hey, man, we need y'all out here. What, you know, what does what it cost? And yes, we are for hire. Uh, they'd be like, well, what does it cost? I'm like, hey, you know, I give them my numbers and they like, boom. And they have us come out, man. You know, and now. Um, See, producer lady. Day, we well, OK, she makes a good point. Um, producer lady over there. Look, she, she says one of the other things was to to make sure that we archive this history, just like how. You have that Beverly House video that everybody's seen. Um, it's kind of the same thing. We want to make sure that there's 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 records of it all. There's there's Absolutely. all kinds of Okay, that's good. Now yeah, that's yeah. that's good. That's all that's good. So like we 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 on the same track, yeah, but we doing uh different roads. But the, right. the road, yeah. the, the road is leading to the same place or leading right. to exactly. the same and everybody knows they want that history. You know, if it, it look, go to Reggie Miles. Reggie Miles, no, he know he know that he know the players, he know the name, he know the game, and that, and and that's your niche, and that's that's what's up, man. I mean, that's a beautiful thing. Um, I like the fact. Let's let's just go over everybody. I like the fact that Denise Steiger is in all of the local Chicago events, and she's straight up in there putting the camera on people that we that others would otherwise never see. Yeah, I like that. I, I like that. I love Denise, right. so, you know. And then you got, you know, you got Tika. She, you know, she has her thing where, you know, she she basically brings up things and says things that some other people might be thinking but don't want to say. That's her lane. Then you got, you know, you got Tony. Tony is hilarious. Tony, man, <laughs> Tony is on another level. Tony's another entertainer, though. Tony is one of them people that, he brings you things and he also has his controversial subject matter, but he brings it to you in a way where he adds levity to it to the point where, you know, he makes good points, but it's always funny when he does it. I had um, to give him, I have to give Abway all the props in the world. Man, I had to give him exactly. all the props in the you world. You know, he, he, he doing his thing, you know, um, uh, you know, Lamont Watts and, uh, and fly diva, you know, they doing their thing on the radio side and, uh, they've got a show that comes on in the mornings. Uh, 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 um, Diva Den. It's called the Divas Den, where they do uh, like a strawberry letter type thing, where they you yeah. know these letters. That's very cool. You know, we all have our place in this, and in the end, um, you and I are fortunate enough. <clears throat> and at one point, Tony, um, and I think even Eric Gordon was doing some stuff. You know, to be able to talk to some of the people that need to be documented. The people who need to be heard from, the people that, uh, you know, have the information, the people who can tell you things, because you got to remember every time people listen to one of our shows, somehow, some way, something that comes out of one of our mouths or one of our guests mouth is like another puzzle piece that they can put in that one empty space on their puzzle that helps them to get this bigger picture of everything that's going on and, and it be clear. So we have to continue dropping these gems and dropping these puzzle pieces along the way so that one person can pick it up and say, oh, that goes right there. I Now I get it. Now I see what I see the sky forming. That's what we do, bro. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm glad we, we had this chance to talk. Turnabout is fair play. That was the only that was the only thing that I wanted to do is make sure that for those that have helped me that I reach back and I help them. You know, my mission is still the same. I just want you to keep walking alive. My mission is still the same. Stepping uh, the dance, social partner dance from Chicago, from Chicago is Absolutely. not just stepping. It's bopping, stepping, and walking. You do not have to do all three, but you must walk. With whatever fast dance that you do, walking has to be part of it. You're not a stepper unless you know how to walk. Okay, you can be stepping, but you're not a stepper unless you know how to walk. And so I'm gonna I'm gonna carry that. I'm gonna carry that till the last breath in my mouth because so I can do them. Both. Let, let me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bookmark what you just. I'm, 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 I'm gonna add to what you just said. 
for the record, ladies in particular, since you all are the majority of people within this dance, let me say this to you. Yes, you can walk without it being creepy. Learn from the right person and you'll be walking with the rest of us and you won't feel uh, imposed upon. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, you know, if you see me and, and you catch me before I get in the zone, just tell me you want to walk. Mm -hmm. And I'll, you know, we, oh, no, nah, well, no, nah, I can't say that because I don't know if the DJ is going to play. <laughs> I'm, playing, see, I'm, I'm, playing, I'm playing seeds, Reggie. The point yeah, is, I got you. I want, I want these ladies to think about what I'm saying to the point where they say, huh, okay, I can walk, but let me find the right person to walk. To learn to Look, walk, walk. listen. You first, I, it, and it, I think I think here. Doc did a is doing a great thing, and we didn't even mention this. But ladies, and yeah, I've I've, I've told this it. I've Weird. told this to ladies before. I you know I even heard this, and I'm gonna say this again. Mm -hmm. You know, every lady out here, you know, it, they they always they got they got more than one dude trying to hit on them. The single bring, ladies, bring you know. <laughs> yeah, bring them with you, or right. the dudes that ain't got a chance, tell them you want them to learn how to All dance. The guys you got in the friend zone that'll do anything yeah. for you, yeah. they won't, they they just want to smell it. Bring them with you, bring yeah, them because it, bring it, them it, it's life. no way that there'll ever be an equal balance of dudes to, with to the women when y'all right. is outnumbered, what 13 to 1? Yep, 12 of y'all is gonna be unhappy at every stepping party automatically. You know, that's just straight up. So y'all need to start bringing guys that you want to dance with, with you. Hey, you know and what? Somebody ought to throw a set and call it Friends on Friday so they can bring the guys they got in the friend. All the ladies can bring their friends on partners with them to the dance. Yeah. <laughs> well, Forbes, man, this is wonderful, man, and I'm glad. Next week, my guest will be uh, Mr. Lester Gibbs and Buford Finley. Looking forward to it. Yeah, and that's, we're going to start talking about walking. And y'all need to check it out. I'm glad I met people from Texas, everybody all over. We out of here tonight. And uh, I just want everybody, let me see. Hey, it's still working. Oh, I'm, I, boy, the technology just got together where I could just end the show now without going through a whole bunch of stuff. <laughs> thank you so much, Mr. Forbes. Tell Poppy, thank you so much for being in the background and keeping, you know, you know, when two Virgo brothers get on, you know, it's going to be something, right? Yeah, we can go some. <laughs> yeah, you know, it, it's going to be something. So yeah, she got to keep me straight back there. Um, You know, uh, right quick, Reg, you need to read that. You need to read that comment right there from Louisa Lowe. Okay, let me see what it says. Uh, Louisa Lowe. Mm hmm. How you both treated me at the Texas he made me want oh yeah to dance uh more thank you both are positive and that means a lot to me see you, you see y'all be putting these comments up and that's gonna like make us be up here another 15 minutes and stuff like that listen <laughs> right, look, we got to go we're gonna do a part two on this later on but I'm telling you you know uh that I appreciate that and thank you so much because you know I'm into I'm I'm in the I'm into let I'm into let now I'm gonna just I'm gonna let this out because this is gonna be my New Year's thing but I'm in the let mm -hmm. living right eating right and treating everybody right mm. that's a hell of a thing man small as that seems that's very very big I'm in the let okay so living right eating right and treating everybody right there so you, you can right. take that for what you were but i'm not i'm not going back and, i'm not doing none of that with this because my I mission right good. now <laughs> is to tell my mission right now is to is to put as much of my generation that lost generation out here hey reggie miles somebody want to know if you got t-shirts available brother you need to be working on that i'm that thank you praise the lord i got people i got people that's gonna handle that Right, but it's, it's it's the let. All right. So peace out for brother. You have a good one, man. Keep up the good work, Reggie. Yes, sir. Peace. That's us, y'all. That's it. Thank you so much here uh, for being with me uh, on conversations. I'm going to get out of here and we got a new thing that we got to do. So please, you know, take this up, share this and let folk know what's happening. And we're going to get back with you all next time. 
All right. Next week, Lester Gibbs and Buford Finley. Peace out.